What's going on, you wonderful nerds? Let me ask you a question. Legacy. What is a legacy? As we continue our month of spider-related videos for Webruary, I started to think about how the role of Spider-Man in movies is almost like a legacy. Much like James Bond, Batman, and the Doctor, Spidey has been played by a few different actors over the years, yet they're all playing Peter Parker, a character who, for the longest time in comics, was unwaveringly THE Spider-Man. I mean, sure, we've had occasional clones or stand-ins or future versions, but for the most part, Peter Parker was Spider-Man, and Spider-Man was Peter Parker. That is, until Marvel's Ultimate Comics universe came along. In the year 2000, Marvel decided to experiment with a brand new universe where they could update their heroes, tell new stories, and create an environment where the writers could take risks without impacting the main continuity that has decades of previous characters and storylines. It would also serve as a decent jumping on point for new comics readers who may have been overwhelmed by the countless stories that Marvel had been printing during their 50 plus years in the industry. The result was Ultimate Comics, which started with Marvel's big superhero, Spider-Man. The idea was a surprise hit for a while, but years in it began to stagnate. To get more attention back on Spidey, they decided to do something radical. Kill Peter Parker and replace him with a brand new character. A teenager named Miles Morales was bitten by a genetically enhanced spider very similar to the one which bit Peter Parker. After gaining spider powers, including abilities that Pete never had, like camouflage and bioelectrokinesis with his venom blasts, he tries out the hero life when he rescues civilians trapped in a burning building. But Miles discovers that being a superhero simply isn't for him. Besides, there's already a Spider-Man swinging through New York. Does the city really need another one? Unfortunately, a few months later, Peter Parker dies in a battle with his greatest foes. New York is without its Spider-Man. The death of Peter hits Miles hard. He believes that if he had stepped up and become a hero earlier, he could have saved Spider-Man from dying. In a way, Peter is to Miles what Uncle Ben was to Peter a death he feels he could have prevented if he had only stepped up and used his powers to fight evil. He decides to carry on Peter's legacy and become the new Spider-Man. As the first letters page on the back of this new Spider-Man relaunch showed, reviews were a bit mixed at first. Some said they liked the idea of having another person take on the mantle of the webhead. Others said the writers betrayed the fans and the character, that it was a cheap move only done for the sole reason of diversity. One even suggested the familiar argument of, why not just give him his own name instead of taking a pre-existing one? I think it's important to note that the act of superheroes passing on their names and roles to successors is incredibly common in comics. There's precedent for these so-called legacy heroes all the way back to the Phantom from the 1930s, predating most popular superheroes like Spider-Man, Batman, and even Superman himself. The Phantom was a title passed down from father to son for over 20 generations. When one dies, another steps forward in his place with Without anyone the wiser. I've tried to make you believe that the evil spirit of the swamp had done away with me, but as you see, the Phantom lives. This persistent chain of phantoms allows the hero to become less of a man and more of a myth, a legend, a symbol. He was even given the nickname the man who cannot die, even though in reality the Phantom has died many, many times, but his seemingly unbroken legacy makes him appear as something more than human. Since the Phantom, many heroes have created legacies by passing on their titles to successors. The obvious example would probably be all the Robins from Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, and so on, but even Batman himself hasn't always been Bruce Wayne. In fact, I seem to recall an entire cartoon series where the plot was that he passed down the mantle to someone else. Over at Marvel, things are no different. Rhodey was Iron Man for a stint instead of Tony Stark, Thor, obviously, and Captain America has even been a title held by many people outside of Steve Rogers. So many, in fact, that we made an entire video about it years ago when my head looked like this. The list of legacy heroes could go on for hours, but there are generally two ways that superheroes pass the torch. You could keep the changing legacy private, like with the Phantom, or you could make the transition clear and obvious, like when Sam Wilson became Captain America. You can just, you know, kind of, you can see that they're not the same person. This noticeable visual transition sends an entirely different message. Captain America is not just one person, not just Steve Rogers. Captain America is a role that can be and has been filled by many others. Fans are even expecting Rogers to be replaced in the MCU at some point. Miles Morales combines aspects from both private and public legacies. Because Peter's death is public knowledge, many rightfully believe that this new Spider-Man must be someone else carrying on the original's name. But 
since the characters of the Ultimate Marvel books are aware that they live in a universe where heroes and villains are constantly coming back from the dead, there's an air of uncertainty and ambiguity. Villains initially think that he is the same Spider-Man back from the dead. I mean, he even says the same quips. There aren't many clues that inform observers of Spider-Man's identity. He wears a full body costume. Before Peter died, one person saw Miles spring into action and took that as confirmation that Spider-Man was black, the original Spider-Man. But they simply had no idea. But we the readers have the privilege of being able to see under the mask. We can confirm that Spider-Man isn't just Peter Parker. As one Marvel fan wrote in a letters page of Ultimate Spider-Man, quote, Today's generation of young readers will get to live in a world where anyone can be Spider-Man. End quote. So with that, I leave you with three questions. Number one, now that a few years have passed, do you think Marvel made the right decision in introducing Miles as Spider-Man? Number two, do you prefer heroes with private or public legacies or none at all? Number three, and this one is just for fun, who is your favorite legacy hero or villain? Mine would probably have to be Jeffrey Mace uh, as Captain America. His story in the comics is so much better than whatever they have him doing over at S.H.I.E.L.D. at the moment. But as always, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. I want to give a huge shout out to all of our patrons supporting these videos over at patreon.com slash nerdsync. The names of those beautiful people are in the description down below. If you want to learn more about all the characters who have taken up the Captain America name, including Jeffrey Mace, as I mentioned, click or tap right here. Or you can watch some other videos that we make here at NerdSync. I know you're going to love them. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.